Hey, welcome to Fleet Friday. My name is Tobias Kirschke. I'm the District Chief for A-Shift. Uh, we'll be showing you our brand new F-150 Chiefs vehicle. Special fire, what is the address of the emergency? What's on fire? Local calls reporting planes coming from the roof. LPDs arriving on scene, stating fire in the stairwells as well. All right, a couple things to note if you've been following our rigs in general. We're transitioning from a white over red model that's on the medic unit next to me and the ladder truck behind me to a black over red model. So this is an example of exactly that. Uh, something else you'll notice is that all the Chiefs vehicles are arranged in the same fashion so that we can switch them out and they become an active reserve after 10 years. Um, the base of this truck is actually black and the red that you see involved in it is a wrap and that has enabled us to save a lot of money in having to come up with custom paints. Um, it also, it, if it's in an accident or it gets scratched, it's easy to switch out. So that's worked out really well. Front of the vehicle has a, a brush guard. You see that all the, uh, the lighting on it is LED based and low profile. So they have gone so far as to tuck lights into areas that you wouldn't normally see, which gives it a lower profile look while you're on the road. Examples of that, and I can turn it off and show you. Are in the, uh, the lighting package, this is my radio. The lighting package and stuff, even on the running boards. And then the small LED lights on the side give you good coverage, yet they're not huge. So you don't end up rubbing them on anything if you're off-road. Inside the rig, you've got uh, an MDT set up that's mounted, but it's actually a t tablet device which works out really well because if you have a problem with it, it can be easily switched out by um, our IT services. So it's pretty flexible. Right above the tablet, you've got a, a camera. Um, the nice thing about that is we use it for after, after action reviews. So it's if the rig is on, the camera's running. Um, it enables us to capture calls. It, the audio is on, so it'll capture the background um, audio, so if you're talking to a chief's aide or your um, assistant, uh, all of that voice data is captured and then we can use to get better. Uh, we've got a two radio, actually a three radio setup. Um, usually we use, this is our primary channel, we use a second radio for our operations channel. Uh, and then we have a VHF radio so that if we switch over to that frequency on wildland calls or for using um, air resources, you can use it straight out of the cab itself. The mics are set up on a green and red system so you can see that the, the radio reflects the button so you're able to talk via headset on either radio um, and keep things straight. All right, this uh, passenger seat has been retrofitted and, and really this was um, an inspiration. Our operations chief just passed away from cancer and we're pushing towards clean cab concepts. So this is an example of exactly that, in that if you look, our uh, fleet built a custom locker inside, and when the car is running, it actually has a pressurization fan that pulls that air out of the cab itself and exhausts out the back. Uh, some of the things that we carry are our wildland complement, our structural complement. Uh, back here, we've got flat jackets and second radios to cover if we go on active shooter calls. In the back here, 
We got Wildland gear, PPE for COVID, masks, we've got a helmet. And then also we have a Ciano kit. So basically uh, these are expensive. So each of the uh, chiefs carry this kit. And if we have a situation with smoke inhalation, the paramedics know to come to our rig, switch this out, and it works to combat carcinogens on our fire calls. All right, so uh, we've got a conventional uh, fiberglass cab over. Uh, it's securable, so you're able to lock it. Uh, we like it because it has separate storage areas. We've set this side up so that it's quick access. So these are the things that we use most often. All our chiefs carry a regular complement of medical components. So if we get on a call first, we're able to start that patient contact on, on our own. Um, some of the other stuff we have for water rescues, we've got um, personal protection equipment and then a throw stick if we get there first. Again, we're able to throw this out to the victim. It automatically inflates and buys us some time before the dive team gets there. Finally, we've got Wildland gear here, web gear. So uh, this same complement is outfitted on each of our suppression rigs. And that way, if you were to be put in a division um, role, you'd have your PPE available to do that. Uh, the vehicle set up on, a, on a, a landline charge. You can see the volts and that way we could check it out in the morning, make sure that things are charging appropriately. In the back here, um, this is usually set up for you and, uh, and Chief's aid. So uh, usually we have two SCBAs right now. We're running fat on our, one of our suppression rigs. So I lent that person a SCBA for the day. We've got a handheld light, an imager. Again, so on a suppression call, if you are asked to be a division role, you have the tools to make that happen. Here, uh, we've got extra uh, flak jackets for active shooter calls. And these are packaged in a format that we can pass them out to um, bystanders or other people showing up. So if you have support personnel that don't have the correct PPE for a active shooter call we can pass these out quickly uh, maybe you've already gone through this with one of our other rigs but this is a decon kit so after each um, active fire there's a protocol in here that the medics follow and then the equipment it takes to to go through a full uh, rehab slash decon process um, so what will happen is the medic unit will be assigned that task they'll come over pick up the bucket everything they need is in here to make it happen. Obviously, um, this is my partner's gear for the day. Uh, we also carry water um, for trainings and calls. That way, um, when things get hot, we're able to pass this out. And the rule of thumb is every time they switch out a bottle, they need a bottle of water. Uh, the last thing here is an extraction kit. This is something that um, uh, the BC rigs carry. And basically, again, on active shooter calls, um, this is a central position in which we can hand out extra um, equipment related to active shooter calls. Uh, the last thing you'll see back here is uh, an inverter. There's a solar panel on the, the ceiling so that if you're not plugged into a landline, uh, you're still getting power and then also we have battery backup and bolt cutters so on wildland calls if we are in a position where we need to get through fences uh, we're able to cut through those and make it to where we need to be we're lucky our fleet is able to custom make these things um, I think the only thing off the showroom floor maybe is the, the tray itself that sits in the back of the bed that comes out. That's a lock release tray. And then um, these brackets we can buy. Uh, and the rest of this type of stuff is actually fabricated um, in our fleet services division. All right, and this compartment uh, is basically a charging station and we have a backup communication equipment. So you've got VHF and UHF radios, um, customer service, we got a lockout kit in case you're at the grocery store or the mall, someone needs help. Uh, we also have a four gas meter that we use. Um, each of our suppression units carries those as well. 
A lot of times um, those are a bit finicky. So if you're on a call and the suppression units um, meter isn't working, we'll switch those out to make sure they do. And then we've got a bank of batteries, some battery harnesses, uh, radio templates that we carry back here so that uh, if these are pre-existing comp plans for the county and when we pass out a VHF radio, we'll pass out that to go along with it. As we move to this other passenger seat, uh, this position is set for a senior advisor. So on the top there, you've got a headset that he can monitor the radio channels. And then down below that, you see um, a file cabinet in which um, it gives a bunch of aids for that person to use throughout the call. The idea here is that that senior advisor arrives on scene and is able to support um, the chief who is in command and his aide. Uh, this passenger position is built for um, the chief's aide. Basically um, what you have is an accountability board, associated pens to write on, communication. When the, when the aide arrives, he usually settles into this position. The, he brings his own board a lot of times. So this is a board I start the call with. They'll come in, start their own board. We contrast both boards we've, before we pass them off. Some of the items that we carry in here, these are uh, pre-plans of the um, MCI pre-plans for some of our um, schools, high schools in the areas. Um, also places like Fiddler's Green, um, hospitals are placed in there as well. And then our headset system is built so that both players can listen and transmit it as they see fit. All our stations are outfitted with a Niederman system. It's magnetic and uh, retrofitted. So even the uh, reserve rigs, when they come in, they're able to um, plug into the same systems. You can check out behind me or in front of me here on the medic unit has a comparable system. And then behind me on our tender unit, um, again, the Niederman system. So flexibility in location of that magnet as it relates to the piping that's plumbed downward to each vehicle.